Richard Southern joins us for a look at the day's business headlines. And Richard, we begin with a rough start to the trading week. Yeah, boy, was it ever. Stocks took a bit of a tumble, Janella, on news that COVID-19 case numbers are hitting a record pretty much everywhere you look. It spooked investors today when the closing bell rang on Wall Street. The Dow was down 650 points. Biggest drop in a few months there. TSX down 224. A lot of those stocks directly affected by the lockdowns were the ones that uh, headed lower. Air Canada down more than 6%. Uh, another sizable sell-off for Cineplex, movie theaters as well. And we got news that case numbers are at a record in the United States. There's a shortage of hospital beds in El Paso, Texas. In Europe, the uh, countries of Spain and Italy are putting in place new lockdowns. And it's just really reminding investors, Janela, that the economic fallout from this is certainly not over. In fact, it may just be beginning. Wow. We'll uh, have to see how that uh, plays out over the next couple of months. Uh, okay. Yeah. There's growing support at Queen's Park for a bill that could do away with the practice of employers requiring sick notes. And I guess that's especially pertinent now with COVID-19. Yeah, sick notes have been temporarily banned in uh, Ontario during the pandemic, but this bill would look to make that permanent because, you know, a lot of employees, if you're away for a, even a day in some places, you got to bring a note to your boss saying, hey, you know, here's my doctor's note, here's why I was sick. But a private member's bill has received the support of all the parties at Queen's Park, and it would remove the ability of employers to demand sick notes for temporary minor illness. Behind the bill is Green Party leader Mike Schreiner. I asked him today why he wanted to bring it forward. I brought this bill forward to address for three reasons, really. One, respecting workers. Let's trust workers and they say they're sick, they're sick. Let's give them time to, to rest and recover. Two, it's good public health. Nobody wants a sick person going into the doctor's office where they're not going to get treatment. They're going simply to get a piece of paper signed to take back uh, to their employer. And three, it puts undue strain on already stretched healthcare resources. Janella, it's past second reading at Queen's Park. We'll have to wait and see whether or not the government uh, signs it into law. But, uh, you know, I, I know my doctor, they hate signing the notes and they even charge for it because they don't like doing it so much. You know? Yeah, and you're not talking about just going to the doctor's office. For some people, that might mean going on public transit or taking a cab or an Uber and exposing more people if they are ill. Absolutely. So, yeah, good thing. Maybe we'll see where this bill goes. We'll see where it goes. Okay, we've heard plenty about the so-called Atlantic bubble and how it's keeping coronavirus counts down in that part of the country. But you're looking at the economic impact. Yeah, you know, the economy in the the economies in the uh, Atlantic provinces, they took a big hit along with everybody else in the spring and the early summer. 171,000 jobs were lost and the region's all important $5 billion tourism sector was crippled. But now the economies, they're starting to bounce back a bit faster than the broader Canadian economy is. And that's leading some to wonder whether or not the strict border uh, closures in Atlantic Canada and the, and the stricter public health measures may have been a, a good thing. I mean, you can't travel in there without a mandatory quarantine and they make sure you quarantine, mm -hmm. unlike, you know, here in Toronto, where a lot of planes land internationally and maybe there isn't that type of follow-up so uh, interesting food for thought there when we look at atlantic canada janella you and i are back at 6 40 with some very interesting stories i'm going to show you toronto's oldest tree in its beautiful fall colors plus nasa made a very big announcement about our closest celestial body today that's coming up at 6 40. all right we'll see you next hour <laughs>